स्वयं प्रभा डिजिटल इंडिया एजुकेटेड इंडिया Good morning. Let us now complete our discussion of uh, the last uh, playwright for this course, which is uh, who is called Badal Sarkar, a uh, very important playwright from uh, from Bengal, uh, born in 1925 and died in 2011. And uh, he is another very important playwright who uh, wanted to make theatre a medium of uh, social and political change and transformation. he was uh, born uh, to a christian family and he got a very colonial education he studied in a bengali medium school uh, at uh, the scottish church college at school he read lots of bengali playwrights as a young man and he also wrote his own plays and then became an engineer uh, he joined the communist party of india and he was deeply affected by the political events of the second world war in his time um but uh, and also his his loyalty his relationship with the communist party also went, underwent many uh, changes and transformations uh, his loyalty to the communist party was not unquestioned uh, because uh, he also questioned of course for example the communist party's support for the congress government uh, the nehru government in the wake of independence he later left the party after he lost faith in politics and then he studied later on to become a town planner and left the party to lead an academic life of his own and also to support the family he realized that being a member of the communist party of india uh, may not actually uh, give him a regular and secure source of uh, livelihood or uh, be a secure a secure source of money and uh, livelihood and so he uh, he went on to pursue his own academic life he initially worked as a town planner as an engineer he joined the damodar valley corporation then later on he went to pursue a diploma in town planning in london which is where he was first exposed to the finest uh, theater from europe and america and then he also spent much of his time later on in nigeria uh, where his professional career blossomed along with his career as a playwright where he wrote most of his uh, best plays in uh, during his time in nigeria and it's also there in his experiences of nigeria where he also uh, discovers the very intimate connection between the rural and the urban uh, world of nigeria uh, something which he then later on tried to uh, do in his uh, during his stay in calcutta uh, he formed his own theater group called uh, shatabdi which only lasted for 2 years because of for want of good plays and actors uh, who many of whom left to act with other uh, theater groups uh he is most known for his play ebong indrajit
कंफ्यूज है क्या मैं आपका नाम जान सकता हूँ अमल कुमार शर्मा आपका निर्मल कुमार वर्मा कमल कुमार मिश्रा जी निर्मल कुमार अमल विमल कमल निर्मल देखिए मुझे तो नहीं लगता कि आपका नाम निर्मल है अरे सर आप कैसी बात कर ठीक ठीक बताओ तुम्हारा नाम क्या है सर मेरा नाम निर्मल है मैं बता तो रहा हूँ बेवकूफ बनाना बंद करो अपना असली नाम बताओ बेवकूफ बन गया तुम बताओ ना सर मेरा नाम निर्मल कुमार है वो तो मैं जानना चाहता हूँ लोग तुम्हें किस नाम से बुलाते हैं तुम्हारा असली नाम क्या है क्या तुम सच में निर्मल हो नहीं तो फिर तुम्हारा असली नाम क्या है इंद्रजीत राय तो तुमने निर्मल क्यों बताया डर लगा डर इस बात का नियम तोड़ देने का जब आप कोई नियम तोड़ते हैं तो आपके आसपास अशांति पैदा हो जाती इससे पहले भी आप अपने आप को निर्मल बताते थे नहीं आज पहली बार बताया ऐसा क्यों अब उम्र हो चुकी उम्र हो जाने पर आनंद और सुख से डर लगने लगता है अब सिर्फ शांति की जरूरत है वैसे क्या उम्र है अब आपकी जी बर्थ सर्टिफिकेट के हिसाब से तो पैंतीस साल और आपका जन्म स्थान दिल्ली पढ़ाई लिखाई दिल्ली में शादी दिल्ली की जॉब दिल्ली और मृत्यु अभी होनी बाकी पक्का पता नहीं चलो जाके दुकान साफ करो किसने बोला तुम्हें आकर के बातें कर रहे अरे यार तुम्हें बोला था मैंने मट्टी नहीं लेकर आया तो मट्टी भी नहीं लेकर आ गया क्या बदलने के रोक रहे मैंने अपने जीवन में बहुत सारे नाटक लिखे हैं मगर मैं अभी भी बहुत सारा लिखना चाहता हूँ दिक्कत की बात यह है कि अब मेरे पास कंटेंट की कमी है क्योंकि मैं आम साधारण जनता की पीड़ा को नहीं समझता खेतों में काम करने वाले किसानों से मेरा कोई परिचय नहीं है संताल मछुआरे साफ खोलने वाले रेड़ी वाले इनसे तो मेरा कोई वास्ता नहीं वैसे आप लोग ही बताइए एक अच्छा नाटक लिखने के लिए क्या जरूरी है एक अच्छी कहानी और कुछ दिलचस्प किरदार मगर कहानी और किरदार मिलना कोई आसान बात नहीं है क्योंकि अगर आप इन्हें ढूंढे भी तो कहा मैं तो अपने आस जिन लोगों को देखता हूँ असल में उनके जीवन में ना तो कोई रंग है ना ही कोई रूप है ना ही कोई वस्तु ये लोग एकदम अनाटकीय लोग हैं ये है अमल विमल कमल एवं इंद्रजीत सर आपकी चाय बट सरकार प्लेज रिप्रेजेंट लार्जली द एंगजाइटीज ऑफ एन अर्बन मैम सो इवन दो इनिशली यू नो बादल सरकार मेड यूज ऑफ सर्टन वेस्टर्न टेक्नोलॉजीज ऑफ ड्रामा एंड थिएटर सर्टन वेस्टर्न ड्रामाटर्जिकल डिवाइस लाइक द प्रोसीनियम आर्च एंड द बैकड्रॉप एंड लाइटिंग एंड सो ऑन ही ग्रेजुअली लेफ्ट द प्रोसीनियम स्टेज बिहाइंड to uh, create something called the uh, angan manch or which is literally translated as the theater in the round right so these were largely uh, you know raised circular uh, uh, stages that were uh, that were surrounded by the audience right so the or, so the actor could see as many people in front of him as uh, as they were behind him so there was never a there was never a uh, the actor never faced the audience and he he did not have a flat uh, backdrop at the end uh, behind him so it wasn't uh, it was a circular setting which uh, exposed him to uh, the audience uh, all around so uh, he gradually of course um, abandoned the proscenium stage and then he began to produce open air performances that were more intimate in the interactions with the audience and he also tried to partly replace uh, conventional characters and themes with groups so he ha- he would have groups of actors who were on stage who would who would uh, engage in uh, a direct communication what he called direct communication with the audience he also made use of uh, poetry uh, and uh, dance uh, in uh, his theater which uh, as uh, the theater scholar uh, of badal sarkar uh, manujendra kundu his book uh, is uh, what i rely on his book on uh, badal sarkar which is called so near yet so far Badal Sarkar's third theater published by Oxford University Press in uh, 2016 is a very revealing uh, insightful study of Badal Sarkar's theater 
and his relationship with theatre and his idea of the form and function of theatre, where uh, uh, Kundu argues that um, uh, that um, Bal Sarkar, uh, his plays were largely reflective of the urban anxiety, anxieties of an urban man. So uh, I don't think, uh, as Kundu says, Sarkar wasn't didn't have any pretensions of uh, you know actually consciously adopting folk forms, folk theatre traditions like Jatra into his plays. Uh, because uh, you know, uh, just the introduction of poetry and dance uh, in his uh, or just performance of any kind, any kind of movement in his play did not uh, imply his knowledge or his direct ex experience of these folk forms. Uh, as uh, many other scholars of theatre, including Anandalal and uh, Shibaji Bondupadhyay, have argued that uh, Rabindranath Tagore had already experimented with uh, this kind of th theatre earlier. So uh, Bal Sarkar was by no means the first person to try and incorporate some of these elements of um, uh, non-Western theatre into his uh, plays. Right? So uh, it's true, of course, that Sarkar wanted to challenge the divide between the rural and the urban uh, because he did, but he largely did perform plays that uh, were reflective of the anxieties of the urban world to a largely urban audience or even a working class audience in a language which was accessible to everyone. He also wanted to make theatre of a very affordable, uh, if not free event. So he would uh, encourage uh, people to, uh, you know, um, uh, donate uh, money uh, for the performance if they wish to, but it was not compulsory. So his uh, primary uh, concern was to use theatre as a medium of social and political change and he wanted to actually address contemporary social and political issues uh, that were uh, you know contemporary uh, to him to his times uh, including you know many issues of corruption political corruption of nuclear war of uh, you know social issues of marriage and dowry and so on and so forth um, he also emphasized a you know, particular skill and technique of acting uh, and uh, he uh, basically wanted to uh, ensure that theatre was a very accessible and affordable uh, and popular uh, medium of art and performance. So he very clearly says that, uh, that he did not have any personal experience of uh, Jatra when he was growing up. He may have watched it here and there. He's had glimpses of it, but then that doesn't necessarily mean that his theatre, which he began to then call third theatre, uh, it's not something which uh, you know consciously drew from these rural uh, folk forms uh, because he still identified with his own urban upbringing and uh, the kinds of issues that haunted his uh, his uh, urban world. So uh, let us first uh, let's then move to uh, one of his plays that has been translated um, and uh, published. Uh, by uh, Siegel in uh, 2009. The plays, uh, we'll be discussing three plays by Bal Sarkar, Procession, Boma and Stale News that were published by Siegel, Calcutta in Calcutta 2009, translated by Shomik Vandupadhyay, Badal Sarkar himself and Kalyani Ghosh respectively. So to look at the first uh, play called Procession or Michil, uh, uh, it's, it's, a, it's a very um, it's a play that, that makes use of, uh, you know, a very a rather complex uh, stage again, which uh, is um, surrounded by the audience, right? So it's not a uh, play that has the audience as, as the fourth wall, but there are people sitting all around the, uh, the uh, performance area. And um, the actors, uh, you know, are... Uh, Many of the actors in, who are acting in the play are anonymous, they remain anonymous and uh, they're only named, uh, you know, one, two, three, four, five, six and so on. So there were six uh, anonymous characters. There is another character called Khoka, uh, a young boy who then we later discover is also a symbol, uh, symbolic character. And you also have the chorus who sings uh, now and then, right? And you also have an old man. And uh, we also discover that Khoka and the old man are uh, interchangeable versions of each other, interchangeable characters. So if you look at the uh, stage directions of the play, uh, it says that the procession, the procession, which is the name of the play, is not meant to be performed on the proscenium stage. 
it has to be staged in an open space with the audience seated all around or on the floor of a large room. So this is uh, Sarkar's idea of Angan Manch. If performed indoors, the chairs and backless benches for the audience should be so arranged as to suggest a maze with a road going in knots and rounds. The road will constitute the acting area with the audience sitting on both sides the way people stand on both sides of a street to watch a procession passing. The actors will have two entrances or exits. The diagram offers a possible scheme. Right, so um, Bal Sarkar, when he imagined, uh, when he thought of this play, he imagined Calcutta as a city of processions, which is why the play is called Procession. Uh, so you have many processions that happen in the city, whether it's a procession by the Communist Party, uh, protesting against uh, fuel hikes or uh, uh, the underpaid uh, you know, workers or um, a procession of Durga Puja. Uh, it's a city of, uh, of processions. So the procession itself becomes a symbol uh, that connotes many things in the play. And so you have uh, an, 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 a performance area which is surrounded by people and it's open and it's like a maze. So you have a road which, is, which goes through the uh, performance area which, is, which turns round and round in knots. And that also becomes rather symbolic uh, in the play. Now, nothing much is happening in the play by way of plot. It's not a densely plotted play. Uh, it's just an idea to uh, express the uh, play's sense of disillusionment with the urban world. Right? So you have a boy called Koka who is missing and who then becomes a rather anonymous symbol of political corruption and loss, of estrangement and alienation in the urban world. Right? And he also then becomes an elusive promise of social security to the socially and politically disenfranchised and marginalized. So the play itself becomes a comment on the marginality of certain sections of the population who are poor, lower caste, women, uh, children, poor children, so on and so forth, many of whom uh, you know, hope to see um, a better future with the help of the government, but the government is always an elusive entity, the state is always an elusive entity that uh, is unable to fulfill its promises. So, for example, uh, you have in the beginning a bell that rings, you have a chorus, five young men, uh, one, two, three, four and five, and a young woman, six, enter the space in the manner of the audience, disperse the space and seem to search for places to sit. The bell stops, the light goes out at once, voices from the dark. Right? So it's, it's almost like as though these characters suddenly em emerge and appear and they seem to almost take the place of the audience. You seem to sit with the audience and you can't distinguish them from the audience initially. Out in the open, the first sequence is usually dropped. The play opens with Koka entering the acting area, coming to the center, dropping dead with a scream and the chorus bursting in immediately with what's that, what's that and spreading all over the acting area. Later on, actors enact being obstructed at bends and crossings to convey the sense of an intricate maze of roads and routes crisscrossing all through. So the actors through their very bodies have to uh, uh, can give the audience a sense of the space, of how the space is an intricate maze of roads and routes that are crisscrossing all through. And so they're always, they're always looking for something, they're always trapped in that maze, looking for a way out. And the chorus is actually wondering, the six characters are wondering what happened. One, what's happened? Why do the lights go out? Two, is it a fuse? Three, load shedding, what a bother every day. Four, no, it's sabotage. Someone must have cut the wire. Five, careful, it's perfect for pickpockets and thieves. Six, can't see a thing, what will happen? And so it's almost like as though the, the, the maze, the performance area itself becomes a space for the city, for the city of Calcutta, where it's a city of processions, it's a city where there are power cuts, where there's a lot of petty uh, theft going on, uh, petty crimes are being committed. Uh, it's dark, it seems dark because of the power cuts. Then they suddenly discover, they suspect a murder has happened, they hear someone crying and they, they are they're convinced that somebody has been murdered, but they're not sure who it is. They're looking for matchsticks or a lighter to find the body but they're not able to find anyone, right? But they're convinced that somebody has been stabbed and the body has been whisked away. 
but they're able to still hear screams and then they suddenly uh, hear the police arrive the police comes and the officer asks well who's been killed no one was killed because they're unable to find the cops so this is a very elusive cops a very elusive murder crime right somebody has been murdered but he can't seem to find the cops then uh, Koka himself speaks uh, as the officer uh, who's keeping guard walks around the voice of Koka is a uh, heard faint at first but growing louder Koka sits up as he speaks then stands walks runs tries desperately draw, to draw the attention of the officer and the audience to himself but the officer does not notice him even when he is right before him Koka I was killed I me here I am I have been killed I I here here I am they kill me I'm dead I was killed just now I was killed today I was killed yesterday I was killed the day before yesterday the day before the day before last week last month last year I'm killed every day every day killed every day dead every day I'll be killed tomorrow day after the day after that next week next month next year I me why can't you see me why can't you hear me I here I am I was killed I am dead I am killed every day every day every day killed every day dead every day so you notice here that Koka is not uh, an actual person who has been killed or murdered in as much as he is a symbol of the uh, the uh, the the uh, violent expulsion the violent marginalization of certain sections of society right so there's a lot of people who are there are people who are being killed every day there are people who are being exploited every day they are being killed in the name of religion in the name of war right in the name of patriarchy in the name of caste right so you have many people who are being killed who are being uh, symbolically or actually marginalized um, uh, and you know violently expelled from society so you see coca becoming an a pervasive invisible and therefore pervasive symbol of this kind of political uh, p- uh, persecution and corruption so he is at once uh, present everywhere and yet he cannot be seen right so this in some sense coca becomes the very trace the elusive traces of the state itself and state persecution state violence then you also have the old man the old man who is one of the characters in the play who says um, when i was small very very small one day one morning halfway between fall and winter a lovely morning with a chill in the air and sunshine dropping with seat, dripping with sweetness i was walking along the road holding on to my father's hand i tramped along the earth road dry leaves crunching under my feet filled with the smell of decaying leaves wild flowers and slushy mud holding on to my father's hands as the ro- road wound and meandered along and kept vanishing under my feet only to yield an ever new road he begins to walk all the roads vanish around the bend then a new road which vanished at the bend and a new road till it vanished again at the next bend and a new one again and a bend and the vanishing road the new the road the bend vanished new the road then father said khoka let's go back i said just a little more to the next bend so i can see what's beyond the bend beyond the bend the new road further said let's go back i said a little further what's beyond the bend the new road let's go back a little further the next bend a little further the next bend so you look at how bal sarkar uses language re- in a very repetitive fashion until he fragments a sentence and you just have uh, a repetition of the same phrase or the same word again and again to give a sense of the futility of this world right so this is there's an old man who uh, is probably an older version of koka who remembers being koka when he was a young boy walk taking a walk with his father and as he's walking he's also capturing the maze like structure of the performance arena and he's walking round and round in a spiraling road that seems to end nowhere right so the the more you turn the more you keep arriving at the same bend you're not able to find the end of the road there's no destination right so there's this deep sense of of feeling entrapped and of a feeling futile right so where is the so where is the solution how does one get out of this structural problem of inequality of injustice of poverty of death starvation and so on and in the meanwhile you have the chorus and the old man also join the chorus 
uh, always looking for the Michil, looking for the true procession. Where is the real procession? Where is the procession of hope? Where is the procession of change? Then again, let's pay attention to how again Sarkar uses language uh, repetitively uh, in terms of these very punctuated phrases. Um, so the chorus is again looking for Koka, wondering where he has gone missing. Uh, so one says, lost, lost, name Koka, age young, nose snub, body thin, brains slightly deranged. Any kind person with information of any kind should please get in touch with the nearest newspaper office. Two, missing, assassination, abduction, a boy named Koka, political stand unknown. Report to the nearest police station or the central missing squad if caught dead or alive or if information is available. 3. Hello, customs. Hello, border security. Hello, Interpol. Khoka lost. Khoka at large. Alert everybody. 6. All India Radio Calcutta. All India Radio Delhi. All India Radio Bombay, Madras, Kanpur, Bangalore, Guwahati, Imphal. Information required about Khoka's whereabouts. Ting Tong. 4. SOS. SOS my Maruti. SS Liberty and so on. Then one again, Koka, come back from wherever you are. Two, your father and mother keep crying all the time and have taken to their beds. Four, uh, three, your brothers and sisters cry as they play, play as they cry. Four, your aunts and uncles, maternal and paternal, cry as they eat, eat as they cry. Five, Koka, come back, you'll get whatever you want. Six, bats, balls, biscuits, chocolates. One, books, notebooks, school, college. 2. Pass, fail, job, business. 3. Land, possessions, house, property. 4. House, car, gold, jewelry. 5. Happiness, peace, religion, salvation. 6. Wife, son, grandchildren, great-grandchildren. Chorus. You'll get it all, come back. You'll get it all, come back. Come back, come back. Come back home. Your folks are shedding tears for you. Wherefore do you roam? His name, old man, his name, his parents named him Khoka. Thousands of parents with thousands of Khokas. Khoka means little. Khoka means one who hasn't grown up yet. Koka means green, raw, immature. Koka rhymes with boka, dumb, and dhoka, betrayal. Right? So you see again uh, uh, these uh, false promises of uh, social security and happiness and joy that uh, the poor and the disenfranchised seem to be that seem to be getting from the state, but the state never actually follows up, fulfills its promises. And so the old man says there are many, many such kokas, right, who are betrayed who are betrayed by the state, betrayed by others, they have no sense of security whatsoever, uh, they are lost and they are rendered anonymous. So that is I think the Bal Sarkar's primary experience of the city that he seems to convey in his place, this deep sense of anonymity and self-estrangement and alienation uh, in the city, right? that you, do, you don't know who you are anymore in that vast mass of humanity which is all uh, which is divided along social and economic and political lines they're all competing for greater and greater share of the resources they're all uh, uh, you know vying for the state's at say state's attention um, they're all rendered in some sense uh, anonymous and insignificant you also notice how the actors very often uh, become different characters in the play Anonymous, again, unnamed, nameless characters. They also become props because uh, Bal Sarkar also believed in the minimal or eliminating the, the use of props in his plays. And they also recreate constantly new spaces right, through their bodies. So the body of the actor becomes very important in Bal Sarkar's theatre. Again, you have a similar uh, you know, statements being made by different uh, characters in the play. Um, Fresh conflict in the Middle East, two says. Three says oil crisis all over the world. Four, another hydrogen bomb explosion in the Pacific. Five, another experiment uh, with the artificial heart. One, earthquake in Peru. Uh, two, cyclone in Bangladesh. Three, uprising in Chile and so on and so forth. Right. So all these different uh, voices seem to reflect the uh, different global and uh, uh, national issues that seem to affect uh, the nation. Um, uh, from including uh, you know rise in fuel prices, rise in uh, uh, you know grains and uh, oil, um, losses for the state transport, uh, breakdown in the railways, 
uh, the postponing of exams. So it's it's it's, it's constantly uh, uh, the play is constantly punctuated with these voices that suggest the complete breakdown of the system, right? Of uh, any kind of economic and political structure of governance. There's also uh, the play also becomes a satire of um, certain institutions of uh, the family of religion, of course. Uh, there's a lot of uh, there's a lot of comments being made on the nature of uh, religious communalism and communal violence that divides the country, uh, and then there's also a critique of uh, nationalism, right? I mean the voice of nationalism and religion. Uh, there are also reflections of violence from different historical periods, from the partition onwards, of how the city has been divided amongst Hindus and Muslims, and so on and so forth, right? Between the upper caste and the lower caste, and so on. There are descriptions of uh, uh, you know people sharing certain uh, public forms of transport, certain public spaces like the tram or the bus. Uh, they're all bustling for. Uh, they're all uh, you know uh, basically um, trying to acquire space in the bus, uh, but they're unable to. They're jostling for space, and uh, and in the midst of all this chaos, this complete utter chaos in the city. Every character is trying to find the real, the true procession. They're looking for the real Mitchell. Where is the real Mitchell? Then there are again, as I mentioned earlier, uh, you know, uh, certain uh, cries of uh, that uh, reproduce the violence, the riots between Hindus and Muslims, um, or the struggle against for freedom against uh, the British colonial uh, system. Um, so there are shouts of Vande Mataram, and then. Uh, there is uh, two says uh, characters two says remember at the moment of your birth your life has been offered in sacrifice to the great mother three glory to the generous british government chorus god save our noble king long live our gracious king god save the king five death to the british dogs four death to the terrorists freedom two non violence three non cooperation four satyagraha five charkha so this all uh, you know lines words that uh, bring back our memory of Gandhi's non-cooperation movement. One, Hindus and Muslims unite. Two, quit India. Three, do or die. Four, karenge ya marenge. Five, British imperialists leave India. Then one, ladke lenge, Pakistan. We'll win Pakistan by force. One part of chorus, Allahu Akbar. Other part of the chorus, Vande Mataram. Chorus, thrash the bastards, thrash them, thrash the bastards. Chorus, oh sir, please, which way to the refugee camp? One, ye azadi jhuti hai, jhuta hai. This freedom is a phony freedom. Chorus, bhulo mat, bhulo mat, never forget, never forget. Right? So these are all cries that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, capture those uh, days of uh, communal violence in the wake of partition and uh, the, uh, the uh, hollowness of, of freedom. Right? So what does freedom mean to the people who, are, uh, do not, who do not belong to the nation, those who are uh, on the fringes and the margins of the nation? Right? So the, the, the elitism of nationalism, which includes only some and excludes the other, uh, is only a, uh, a phony kind of a freedom. Right? So the freedom, the independence, which is one for a nation to be, which does not include everyone, which is built and based on exclusions, is a phony freedom. So the, the play, of course, is a satire that exposes the hollowness of uh, nationalism and patriotism. Remember, the master says, remember our national heritage. Remember the, num the, new, the numberless martyrs in our struggle for freedom. Remember the revolutionary heroes of our fiery days. Remember, India is the country of Manu, Parashar, Kalidas, Bhavabhuti, Sita, Savitri, Sri Chaitanya and Gandhiji. Remember the invinci invincible strength, the principle of non-violence. Remember that it is our responsibility to give spiritual leadership to the world. Remember the greatness of democracy in India. Remember the fundamental rights of the constitution. Remember the green revolution, the nationalization of banks, family planning, dollar aid, the nuclear blast, MISA arrest and so on. So uh, in, the, in the wake of all these memories right, that, that you, have to, you have to remember your heritage of tolerance of democracy. But that is in stark contrast to the reality of post-independence India where this is a deep sense of disillusionment with uh, the country, right, with the nation, where uh, uh, freedom is saffron, revolution is green, the pocket is red, the market is black, right? Um, then the chorus says, glory be to Lord Krishna, avatar of the markets. We bow at the feet of Lord Black Market. 
Hail to the black god. The black god will save us all. Vote for Mr. Blackie Marketwala. Vote for Mr. Blackie Marketwala. Right? So, Sarkar is obviously uh, parodying, ridiculing, uh, satirizing. The, the black market, the, the, the kind of the uh, vast uh, uh, sense of corruption that, uh, uh, that uh, is the state of the post-independent uh, country. So there are all the basic commodities are not affordable to, the, to a majority of the population. Coal, bran, kerosene, baby food, textbooks, rice, dal, oil, sugar, flour and so on. There are also voices of, of, uh, of, of the poor where uh, there are people who are uh, fighting for food, who are begging for food. So there's a deep sense of, uh, of um, deprivation and poverty. Then there's also a sense of, uh, there's also satire of human civilization, right? So he says, so uh, for example, uh, two, said, uh, two says, all men were equal at the beginning of creation, but they were uncivilized. Three says, all day long they worked, yet there was never enough to eat, so they were equal. Four, then men learned to use animals, learned how to farm, then they had surplus. Five, surplus brought civilization. Man became civilized, civilization, civilized man, civilized society. One, who would join the surplus? Everyone, who would enjoy the surplus? Everyone, no, only those with virtue, with intelligence, with strength. So only those who have power, those who have access to education and wealth, they are the ones who actually enjoy the surplus of Civilization. So, civilization itself is built on uh, discrimination, on violence, and on depriving some people of freedom. They are the ones who work for uh, the rest, who are their masters. Right. So, uh, there's a very clear uh, unequal access to resources. Right? So, the progress of science, the progress of, of civilization, is built on uh, inequality and hierarchy on a divide between the haves and the have-nots, between the intellectuals, the aesthetes, the ones who are, uh, you know, uh, who believe the, the intellectuals and those who are uh, the working class, the, the, the ones who labor, the ones who are exploited. And what is the greatest enemy of civilization? It's communism. And who protects, preserves and upholds civilization? You, the master. Chorus cries. So the master, of course, can be anything. Because the master could be capitalism in this case. It could be imperialism, and they are the ones who keep us civilized. It's this, it's a civilizing force, right? While communism is it believes in the co in in in, uh, in common shared access of uh, sh shared access of resources and not private property, and so that becomes the uh, the other uh, battle between communism and capitalism, which is now being reflected. Uh, and again, there are again further voices of uh, you know, uh, the, the struggles, the strife that farmers have to face in terms of unseasonal rain, in terms of, of mounting debt, the fact that the state will not redeem their debts and they have to suffer uh, with um, uh, debt ridden, uh, being, being uh, I mean, unable to redeem their debts. Many of them have uh, been given adulterated cooking oil, which uh, leads to the food poisoning of the entire family. So there are many fam farmers and their families and the poor, who are, the urban poor who are, who are dying because of their uh, inability to access uh, good, uh, pure uh, resources. Uh, there are, uh, there is a lot of police corruption, a lot of police violence, uh, you know, who are police who are, you know, persecuting innocent people, innocent poor. Uh, simply because they're pure poor, they exploit them and they beat them up, and so on and so forth. Right? So they're constantly in search of coca, and they're unable to find where coca is. Right? And they're they're they're, they're all climbing. The old man is climbing along with the rest up the spiral road, and they're unable, unable to find coca. And uh, it's only towards the end of the play that we have a sense which that it actually ends in a sense of hope. Now, there is no uh, solution to these problems as such. There's no uh, vision of what, of how these problems can be redeemed, how humanity can be redeemed, how these problems can be resolved is not something which is clearly spelt out, right? So there are many other problems which are being listed as we go along the play, uh, uh, especially, for example, uh, people who are killed for, uh, you know, marrying outside their caste, uh, there are uh, uh, there's violence against rickshaw wallas, for example, who uh, some claim are becoming uh, arrogant. They're putting on airs. So then there is another f uh, fourth voice, which is complaining that uh, that the whole world has turned atheist. That in, only in our country, 
uh, only our country has some religion, but even that is going out. Right? So the fact that there are some who are being persecuted for their complete utter lack of faith in God or worship of any kind. And um, so in some sense, the missing boy, Koka, uh, is, uh, becomes a symbol of all this, right? of uh, this deep sense of, uh, of alienation, of estrangement, of violence, of intolerance, of uh, ca different kinds of violence, communal violence, sexual violence, uh, you know, caste violence, class violence. Um, so he says, Khoka says towards the end of the play that, um, stop it, stop these lies, it's not the truth. How can you tolerate it? Don't you see? This is all rubbish, deceit, an attempt to confuse you. I have been killed. I am killed every day. I will be killed every day. That's the truth. In the dark of the night, in the din of day, every day, you are trying to cover up that truth. But you cannot. I won't let you cover it up. You, all of you, don't let them cover it up. So there's always this fear that there are some people, especially how the way in which the state and those who are in power tend to bribe uh, the poor, the disadvantaged, the disadvantaged with promises, right? That uh, they will somehow... Uh, uh, be redeemed, they'll, they'll, they'll somehow be freed of all their problems if they decide to vote for those who are in power. Right? So there's this deep sense of um, uh, this, the ways in which art and culture are being used as uh, ideological mechanisms to uh, delude the people, right? to uh, you know, deceive them, um, uh, to uh, play a game in which the lower classes, the women, those who are disadvantaged, are kept in their position of servitude and subordination, right? So, Koka is that voice that wants to make uh, everyone wary. He's the voice of the uh, disenfranchised, of the poor, the marginalized, uh, that wants to be wary of all these games, these power games that those who are in power play uh, in order to deceive them. And so, all these characters in some sense are lost in these many several processions in the city, these processions that seem to be, uh, stand, that seem to stand and represent different causes, but then uh, all in the name of power and corruption, but then there is, where is the true procession, right? Which is the real procession, which is a procession of hope, which is an inclusive procession that includes all those who have been left behind earlier. Right, so Koka represents the elusive truth, the hollow name of injustice and ethics. He is the voice of hunger, of starvation, of disease, poverty, and death. And the old man and, the, and Koka are also versions of each, each other, which suggests that nothing much has changed over the generations. Right, that that the country is still plagued with all these and haunted with all these problems. And so there has to be some uh, way in which we can form a procession. Right, which is a note of hope. It's a procession of hope, which is able to expose the ideological uh, mechanisms, the ideological means through which those who are in power, the elite, those who use art and culture as a medium of uh, of deceit, uh, can be exposed. Right, for what they are. Right, so can be exposed for their corruption, for uh, their uh, power hunger. Right, so so this. This performance really, I mean, this, this play really is suggestive of that very uh, thing where uh, the play becomes in, in many ways a statement and a satire on various problems that plague the country, various economic and social problems of seasonal, uh, seasonal employment, unemployment, the debt-ridden uncertain lives of farmers and peasants, the unavailability of jobs. Uh, uh, despite qualifications, despite being qualified, uh, all this is being represented through the voice of Koka, uh, who also symbolizes the loss of self. Right? In, in the midst of all these problems, there's a loss of, this, of a sense of self. Everyone becomes anonymous. Everyone uh, suffers a deep sense of estrangement and alienation uh, that comes from exploitation and the forces of capitalism. And so the only way in which one can perhaps uh, arrive at a sense of hope is to have a new procession, a new procession which symbolically includes everyone that entails the joining of forces between those who are victimized, those who are disenfranchised, the powerless. And uh, in an attempt to try and self-consciously expose 
uh, the uh, self-deceptive mechanisms of capitalism, of patriarchy, uh, of, uh, of urban uh, politics, right, and so on and so forth. So that ends our very brief discussion of uh, Bal Sarkar's first play, uh, Procession or Michil. Thank you.